Greetings! This is astrologer Pam Younghans, and here is my forecast for the week of May 1st to 7th, 2023. A very eventful week is opening before us, with catalytic Pluto stationing retrograde on Monday and a high-powered Scorpio lunar eclipse on Friday. Pluto will come to a standstill at 0 degrees 21 minutes of Aquarius on Monday, May 1st. This is Pluto's first station since entering the sign of the water bearer on March 23rd. In a sense, this is our initial test case of the Pluto in Aquarius effect, since the influence of a planet is magnified when it stations and thus should be more tangible in our experience. This week, we can expect to see specific evidence of how Pluto's transit of Aquarius will impact us on both ends of the vibrational spectrum. In the positive, Pluto in Aquarius manifests as social progress, advances in human rights, technological developments that benefit the global community, and new levels of humanitarianism and cooperation between individuals. On the shadow side of the equation are extreme ideologies, exploitation, fears related to technology, radical expressions of power, and a lack of sympathy due to too much detachment. On a personal level, we may feel an intensification of emotions or desires with Pluto stationing retrograde. This may be especially true for people who have planets or points in their natal charts at 0 to 1 degree of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius. Pluto's job as a psychotherapist planet is to bring to the surface feelings or issues that have been in some way denied or suppressed. As we deal with these unconscious patterns more directly, we ultimately free ourselves from the control they have wielded in our lives and thus gain greater self-empowerment. This month's full moon, which will be accompanied by a penumbral lunar eclipse, perfects at 10.33 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time on Friday, May 5th. At that time, the moon will be at 14 degrees 58 minutes of Scorpio, and the sun will be at the same degree of Taurus. A full moon is generally a time when we feel emotions more profoundly. Energetically, a lunar eclipse is like an oversized full moon, which means its emotional impact is increased. And this eclipse is in Scorpio, arguably the most intense sign of the zodiac. Add to this the fact that Pluto, the planetary ruler of watery Scorpio, is basically at a standstill this week, and we have a perfect storm in effect. Scorpio could be called the all-or-nothing sign. It feels everything very deeply and is strongly motivated to act on those intense feelings. Once it has released the emotional tension through some form of expression, it experiences a catharsis of sorts. This is one reason we associate Scorpio with a process of detoxification or purification, as it often takes us through an uncomfortable phase of purging before we emerge cleansed on the other side of the process. In galactic astrology, the middle degrees of the fixed signs are called the points of Avatar. At the time of our eclipse this Friday, the moon will be at the Scorpio point of Avatar, with the sun at the Avatar point in Taurus. Knowing this gives us additional insights into the cosmic purposes of the eclipse. Astrologer Mary Elizabeth Jochmans shares these insights into the meanings of these two points of Avatar. The Scorpio point of Avatar deals with true compassion without expectation. We have the ability to be aware of others, their feelings, wants, needs, desires, ego and spiritual drives, and more. This point is aligned with divine will, as compared to personal will, and carries the ability to transform and transmute low-energy situations, places, and cells to higher vibrations. There is knowledge and the ability to communicate directly with the angelic realm to bring about changes for humanity and the earth, leaving new patterns both etherically and physically. The Taurus point of Avatar deals with unconditional love, learning to love self and others in a detached, unselfish way, but without self-sacrifice. This is the point of service to humanity, of going with the flow of the divine. 
It uses new sounds, symbols, and colors to create a global mandala, a vision of the ideal for a new earth and a new humanity, thus bringing new systems into manifestation. Another important feature of Friday's full moon eclipse is that the sun will be within four degrees of Uranus and also only six degrees away from retrograde Mercury. Whenever Uranus is involved in a planetary event, we are cautioned to expect the unexpected, which primarily means to remain flexible and open-minded. As we experience the influence of this week's eclipse, which will be building in the days leading up to the actual event, there may be surprises and detours we hadn't anticipated that change our course and set us in a new and unfamiliar direction. There is also heightened nervous energy associated with high vibrational Uranus. Staying grounded and centered as much as possible will be helpful. However, some may respond to the Uranus effect with anxiety or sudden erratic behaviors. Ultimately, Uranus is an agent of liberation, intending to free us to be more fully authentic, especially if we have been living according to shoulds. Sideways spinning Uranus is also the planetary representative of higher consciousness. Changes that unfold under Uranus's watch disrupt our usual perceptions of reality so that our minds become open to a much higher perspective. The breakdown of old thought patterns and mental attitudes could be especially pronounced this week due to retrograde Mercury's proximity to the full moon. Here are this week's most important planetary aspects, with my brief interpretations of each. On Monday, retrograde Mercury is semi-square Neptune. Dreams blend into waking reality with this aspect, perhaps making it hard to differentiate fact from fiction. And on Monday, Pluto stations retrograde. Small but mighty Pluto comes to a standstill at 10.08 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time today at 0 degrees 21 minutes of Aquarius. And on Monday, the Sun is conjunct retrograde Mercury. We are now almost halfway through Mercury's retrograde phase. Today, the Sun shines a light on issues that have been a source of confusion or discouragement since Mercury went retrograde on April 21st. The extra light of the Sun helps us see more clearly what plans, ideas, and perspectives are needing to be altered if we are to achieve our goals. On Tuesday, the Sun is semi-square Neptune. Similar to yesterday morning, we may begin the day feeling somewhat foggy and unclear of our direction. But also on Tuesday, Venus is sextile Eris. Some may strongly express controversial opinions today, as Venus in Gemini finds support from Eris in assertive Aries. On Wednesday, retrograde Mercury is semi-square Venus. Communications are more problematic today, and some may be rethinking their recent forthrightness. Also on Wednesday, Mars is sesquiquadrate Saturn. Our own conscience or pressure from others may stall forward motion, giving us the opportunity to consider the longer-term ramifications of our actions. On Thursday, with Venus square Neptune, Idealizing a relationship or a financial investment can cause problems and disillusionment. But with Venus sextile Jupiter today, we are supported in an open exchange of ideas within our relationships. On Friday, we have the full moon and lunar eclipse. The moon reaches fullness at 10.33 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. It is accompanied by a penumbral lunar eclipse which is very subtle visually. Those who view the eclipse may see only a slight darkening of the moon's surface. It will be most visible in parts of Asia and Australia. There are no major aspects exact on Saturday. On Sunday, Venus enters Cancer. While Venus transits the sign of the crab from May 7th to June 3rd, we are more aware of a need for comfort and security in relationships. During these weeks, home is where the heart is, and the heart is most happy at home. However, with Venus quincunx Pluto on Sunday, trust could be an issue today, 
and some may feel protective or defensive if challenged. If your birthday is this week, you may feel a strong need to break free from restrictions this year, and yet there could be some delays in implementing your plans. If this occurs, consider it an opportunity to spend more time in introspection, understanding what your core values are and how they may be best honored by your life choices. Keeping a journal or even jotting your thoughts down on post-it notes can help you sort through your options. This is a good year to try new experiences and to be open to alternative ideas and information sources. If you feel drawn to embark on a new life journey, be sure to include more than one possible route in your itinerary, since your self-understanding and ideas of what you want may continue to shift throughout the year. This is astrologer Pam Younghans wishing you an insightful week. Thank you for being with me on this journey. We hope that you have enjoyed this article. For over 30 years, we at Inner Self have sought to encourage new attitudes and new possibilities. For more inspiration, visit us at InnerSelf.com. Thank you. Visit the Inner Self Market for new attitudes and new possibilities. You'll find inspiring books, wonderful music CDs, audiobooks, card decks, candles, jewelry, gifts, all kinds of wonderful things. Visit us at market.innerself.com.